Why is it you have purpose? Yes. If you don't know that you have purpose, you need to ask God to show you what your purpose is. You know, the Word of God tells us our responsibility is to love the Lord thy God with all of our hearts, our minds, our very souls, and our very strength. Amen? And then he says to love... You want to go to the bathroom? No. I thought you were going to forget your neighbor. And, and it continues to say, and our neighbor as we would love ourselves. Amen? So I want you to... Just ignore my wife for a moment. Just look at the neighbor next to you and say, neighbor, I love you. Yeah. It has become a cliche in the house of the Lord, and it's got to stop. It has to be a genuine expression of a heartfelt love for one another. Amen? And I believe that as we practice the Word of God, we'll see results in our own personal lives. And our families will start turning around. Situations will start making sense. Amen? Good morning. So we need to start loving as we love ourselves. Amen? So anything you have against anybody right now, say, Father, forgive me. Father, forgive me. I don't know. Do you want to leave the room for a moment? I'm S- relax. To my no, you relax, relax. <laughs> this is my dear wife of fifty, almost fifty-two years. We understand each other, but the Lord is good, merciful, and kind to, to us all. Amen. So this morning, as we bow our hearts before the Lord, we're going to believe for great things because we need a heart change. I don't know about you, but I need a heart change this morning. I'm not just talking about heart surgery, cutting my heart and opening the valves, and all. I'm talking about a Holy Ghost experience with my heart. Amen. And I believe as we continue to seek the Lord for this and and desire to please Him first, we will see miracles, miracles. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, as we bow our hearts before you this morning, as we come before you in reverence, O God, (laughs) knowing who you are, the God Almighty, the one who created all things, make of all things, you who spoke and then you saw, hallelujah. You spoke it and you saw it, God. And here we are. We are your people, O oh Lord God, and we are who you say we are, sons of God. Father, this morning as we gather and come to, to praise you and worship you, the Most High, we ask, O oh God, that you be in the very midst of everything that's done here this morning. And for those who are coming as visitors, Father, let them see a reflection of you in this house. Yes, God, fill the house with your glory. We're not just here for show. We're here to, to meet the living God in this holy place. So, Father, do something with us this morning. Each and every one of us need a heart change this morning. There's something hidden deep in the recesses of our heart, God, that needs to be rooted out this morning. Yes, you do the searching and rooting out. We give you praise. Now, Father, anoint this house with your presence. More than anything else we need is your presence. Be glorified. Be magnified. Be exalted in this place, O God. And, Father, thank you for allowing us to come close. (laughs) Oh, you said you will wrap your arms around us if we just seek you with all of our hearts. Ah, yes, Lord, that's it. It, We feel like it's like a blanket, Lord, a a blanket of love just resting upon us right now. Hallelujah. All the cares are disappearing. Yes, the waves and the angry things of the world are just leaving right now. Hallelujah. Your peace, your perfect peace. Be magnified, O Lord, in this place. Yes, God, we worship you. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a praise. Yes. Exalt his name in the house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. As you make your way back to your seats, let's be prepared to worship in spirit and truth. Hallelujah. Before you see that, I want you to act like you've lost your mind because, listen, you've been born again, 
Salvation is written all over you. You better have something to shout about. Come on, open your mouth. Give God some real praise in this house. Hallelujah. I want to hear you. Come on. Give Jesus the praise he deserves this morning. Amen. Worthy of all praise. What's his name? Jesus. I said, what's his name? Jesus. Yeshua, the king of glory. Now, before you're seated, touch somebody and say, listen, we're in this together. We're family. We're family. And then you may be seated. God bless you. Just trying to get your attention. Okay. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Well, it's good to see you all this morning. I'm sure you got up all excited about coming to the worship house. Amen. And here we are assembling ourselves to worship him in spirit and in truth. Well, it's a glorious day. Even though the kind of crazy things going on outside, we're in a place where God has kept his hand upon us. Amen. We have no worry, no concern, because Christ is for us. And if he is for us, who can dare be against us? Amen? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We're going to receive the morning offering. I'd like to ask you to be generous. We are way behind because of all the ham and turkeys we have bought for Christmas. And so just uh, ask the Lord what you should do and be generous this morning. Amen? Praise the Lord. I'm so glad we were able to do that. Yeah. I think we gave out over $1,000 worth of food on the Christmas holidays. And uh, yeah. 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 yeah, so proud of our team. I know that Wanda always has a report, and uh, she's doing a great job bringing that together. Amen? Yeah. Now, before we get too far, don't, 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 don't. Before we go any further, say Leonard. Leonard. Say Deacon Leonard. It's about time you got home. It's about time you got home. Now. Okay, go ahead. Serve the people. <laughs> they say, which one is Leonard? Which one is Leonard? The bald head one. Oh, no, the two bald headed guys. Or not put this back in your wallet. No. I already put. Jesus Christ, our living hope. Mari, it's good to see you. Oh, my goodness. Thank you, Father. If you're visiting this morning, you'd like to leave an offering here at the house, so you'd like to bless the Lord and bless this house, make your checks out to New Beginnings Life Center. And, uh, you know, Bill is always very faithful to see at the end of the year you get your statements. How many of you have received your statements? Good. No, you can file your taxes. Yeah, yeah, praise the Lord. Let's all stand together this morning. As we lift up, give them before the Lord. Good morning. Glad you're here. You happy to be here? Come here. Come stand here with me. What's your name? Huh? Damon. Damon, okay. I want you to lift your right hand with me, Damon. Heavenly Father, as we come before you to present our offerings, O oh Father, we know that you put these things in our hands to bring unto you, Lord. We call them holy unto you, Father. Father, we ask in Jesus' name that you bless those who have nothing to give. O oh God, open the window of heaven to those who need. And bless those who've come, Lord, with that which you've given us to present to you. And bless the offering. Bless your people in a special way. Open that window of heaven, O oh God, that everyone can say they have more than enough that you may be glorified in our living. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, Damon. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Don't go anywhere yet. Don't get nervous about the children, Jesus says, to bring them unto him. Amen. 
He says, because he loves the children. Now, you know, we've been missing you because the offering's been very, very low. And you've always been here to... Don't, she's our evangelist. Yes, sweetheart. You want to say something? It's Brian's birthday. It's Brian's birthday? Where's Brian? It's working? He's sick? Okay, we'll pray for Brian. But see, you haven't been here to collect the offering for the insurance. So I want everybody to take out a $5 bill. At least a $5. Go ahead. You wrote your last check. Now give me your cash. $5. Everybody give me $5. You're going to collect the money. Here's mine, okay? And then bring it here. Go ahead. Go ahead. You collect it. See, they're going to, they're going to call you when you're, they're ready. Leonardo's given 20. That's good. You've been missing three Sundays, brother. <laughs> Oh, God bless you. God bless you. And this side is very quiet overhead. Go get them. See, that's how it's done. Jesus Christ, our living hope. And see, they're way back there. There you go. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Father. Praise the Lord. Isn't it interesting we want more than enough in our house, our private homes, but when it comes to the Lord's house, we have to ask. Uh, God bless you. Thank you, Father. Everybody's got, had a chance to, to give. Praise the Lord. I had the most incredible, my wife and I, the most incredible experience on Friday evening. You know, we meet here every Friday evening to celebrate singing and the, the sharing of the word and, and uh, testimonies. And uh, I heard some things that uh, really stirred my heart. I had no idea that these children, so many of them had gone through so much. And, you know, you're sitting in the house and you've gone through some crazy things in your lifetime, too. And, you, you know, you probably don't talk about them anymore because they're very hurtful and maybe even shameful to you. But I want you to start focusing on these children. Yes, some of these children, the children, they probably have no, no daddies. Come on. Anybody been there? There was not a father in the house? Some of them, the mothers aren't here. Some of them have some struggles in school. You've probably been reading about that in the papers. That's this class, these children. Right, Lisa? But I want, I want to say this. If we don't open our hearts to the young ones, you know, we get nervous when they're running around and, and, and when they come and, and they don't behave the way you expect them to behave. Your responsibility is to love them. You know, just, just care for them. And when you see them unruly, just put your hand upon them and say, settle down, everything is all right, and grab them, hold them, and, and smile. Don't be angry. Amen. They, these kids, these children are going through, you know, I don't like the word kids. I'll tell you right now. Because we used to have goats in St. John. And goats gave kids. But these children have gone through so much. And I want to thank, I want to thank Lisa. What's your friend's name over there? Lane. Lynn? Lena. Lena. I want to thank you. I don't always remember your name because it, I always call you Lynn or Lena, but it's Lena. Lena. Yes. Thank you for being there, so being so faithful. Yeah. Let me, t come a second. That's all right. I have insurance. I heard a story that troubled me uh, Friday night where um, Lena had to go to a certain place where there's a lot of trouble, tur turmoil in the home. And she slept outside of the door so the enemy didn't do its damage. Now, that's devotion. And, I, you know, I'll probably put you on the spot, but people need to know. I do it to them all the time. Anyway. <laughs> but people, people need to know that there are people who really care. Amen? And God is calling us now to a place where we, we better start caring. We, we're too comfortable in this country. We're too busy watching the tube because there's so much going on in the White House and we, and we want to make sure we don't miss anything. Well, what about the children? Yes. What about the children, the young people? I commend you. Yeah. I really do. I thank you.
Thank you for being the woman of God that you are. Yes. Praise the Lord. Praise and Lisa, God. it's been it's been thirty years now. Yes. We've been together, and I, it's, you know she goes to the projects and, and pick up these children and and the, have feed them breakfast and, and after school lunch and dinner, and yeah, and she's a real grandmother. Yes. Amen. Yes. But I want I want to also commend you that you haven't given up. Yes. You know, because you've you've been. Don't you recognize her? Do you not recognize her? Which one? It's going to make me cry. Cassie, stand up. This Cassie. child is who I am 30 years ago. Yes. I brought these same children. I had Bebe's kids. I know you older people know what oh, Bebe yeah. is. <laughs> Girl, listen, and I said up under him, why do you think he's used to it? I brought the worst children in the world. Okay, and they climbed all under y'all's pews. And he would say, do not pay attention, just like he said. 30 years later, he's still saying to say that. Don't pay attention that they're knocking over this, this stuff. Just somebody get them. Because I was coming to Christ, Cassie. That's what happened to me. And then Larry, Lennon and Lance sat up under them. And they were crawling under the pews. I didn't know what to do with them. Less than sending them to heaven early, I didn't know what to do. I wanted to kick them right through the goalposts of life. Early. <laughs> Take them in, God. Now I don't cry, sweetie. This church is a church. They don't make me cry. I wouldn't even be here. 30 years later, don't worry about them kids. I know they're driving your last nerve. I know that. But listen, you in a church that love you, that don't care. They don't care. You don't get no help. And nobody there for you, right? And nobody there for you. That's where I was when I got out of my car all alone and took them baby's kids in this church up under this man. And listen to me. They've been changed. Their lives will change. Don't you sit here and worry about it. Dirty diaper and all, we just going to carry on. God love them, dirty diaper and all, baby. That's what I found out. I found out they love me. I started bringing little cars to church, pillows to church. I started bringing snacks into church. Ask them. I'd sit in the back and I couldn't find them. They'd be three pews under. Somebody bring them back or somebody would take care of them. Zach just told us, Kim got him and said, I got him. Okay. She wanted to go after him thinking, it's a bad thing. I'm a bad mother. She's not a bad mother, folks. She's not a bad mother. No, she's a good mother. She's a good mother. She's in church with him today. That's a good mother. She wanted to train him up in the way that they're supposed to go. So we're going to love her just like he loved me. Okay? And you got children up in here today that foster care let us bring. They don't even have a mom and daddy. Okay? They don't got nobody right now. All they got is us. And I don't care how they come. Sometimes they come in pajamas. That's all we got. We went through clothes all weekend to make sure we could dress them. So don't, you know what I mean? You're not. This is not that church. Or I wouldn't walk through them doors. But Jesus, we were losing our place. I was losing my place. Just as I was 30 years ago. And he told me to come here. I came alone. I denied them to come. I said, no, this is for me. And Lord, let me sit right in there. You know, I cried and cried and cried. And cried and cried and cried. Because I was home. I was home. Then I went back and they're like, can we go now? Can we go with you now? I'm like, okay. We going. <laughs> I don't know how we going, but when we started getting in a Toyota 12 deep. Come on. Come on, right? 12 deep, and y'all notice that? Wow, that could be dangerous. Now we're going to see the Lord one way or another. We're either going to the church or we're going home early. One of the two. I don't know how. how but they say, Miss Lisa, every time we ride with you, we pray. I said, you learn how to pray quick. Okay, that's how you do it. You learn how to pray quick when you're with Miss Lisa. And you don't even know how to pray. They never even prayed before. They're like, oh, God, I probably haven't said I'm sorry or whatever, but I'm riding with her. <laughs> so let me into heaven with her. But anyway... The children, we picked all these children up on Friday. We keep them through Sunday. We feed them when we pick them up. They have not eaten. I make dinner before they get there. They take a school bus, some of them. Not even their address. They have coaxed a school bus to drop them at my place. They don't all live there. You're reaching a community and people in homes, not just a homeless shelter. You're reaching families. You're reaching these parents that do have parents. Do you know what I'm saying? You're reaching them. 
Friday night, he talks about Friday. He don't even know what he did. Now, how often do you hear the pastor talk to you, uh, uh, to a child about cancer? I never heard that. But the Lord prompted him on Friday night to say something about it. I, he walks with God every day, wakes him up tell, all the time. He, he got to be exhausted because I try and I can't even keep up with it. So, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, God, you know I'm praying today. Get over here. You know I got to cook this chicken today. You know? I mean, I don't know how. He said, get my prayer closet. It's right next to the stove. Close the bathroom door. You know? <laughs> That's how it works. However, he spoke to the children. We brought some kids with us. The mama said she's going to church. Lane and I have no clue. No clue what's going on. When we pick them up, we don't know everything. She said that she came in with this pink hair. Bright pink. I love it. I'm like, hey, I wish I could sport that. Yeah, it's her sister. You would tell it. Your story, you tell it, baby. Um, well, my sister had cancer for seven months, and they didn't really know her for sure. And she came on Friday, and the pastor was praying with her. So, yeah. Anyway, it's her sister, Joanne. We didn't, don't cry, baby, because she was in the hospital for eight months, but they couldn't afford to go see her, so she stayed there alone. And Mama said it, she had a lot of other kids. When she came home, she said, you going to church. And she went to church. Love you. This is Trinity. And uh, Thank you, Trinity. she got, it's okay, baby. But when the pastor said something, the girl, she didn't even tell us. She moseyed through life without saying anything. But then when the pastor spoke about his cancer, I was watching her, and she was staring at him. She, she wanted to speak to him afterwards. And then we get in the car, and then we're told. Had we known? This is a 14-year-old child spent eight months alone in a hospital battling cancer. And when she heard the love of the man that's in the church, had the same thing she could relate. He, he, he just did that because it was God. She needed to hear that. She needed to know. She can't wait to come back. You know what? We've been asking to do her hair. Lena does hair. She wanted to get a hold of that little girl's hair. We didn't know she didn't have any. She kept saying no. No, no. She wouldn't tell us why it's only this long, right? She's getting it back. It's growing. But why didn't we know that? Why do these children have to hide their secrets? They don't have to hide them here. You don't have to hide it here, baby. Not anymore. Not anymore. Come here. You want to introduce you? Say you go to church every Sunday, Carolyn. That's Carolyn. She's beautiful, ain't she? She's beautiful. See why children's church is so important? It is. This is God's people right here. You know, we're all clogged up. No, I'm serious. We're all clogged up. I'm going to tell you that. I didn't know what that was. One time he preached a vessel, that vessel thing, you know, where it poured in. And then it overflows at the top. It don't come out. It's like a clogged drain. Don't you hate when your drain clogs up? That's you. That's you. That's the truth. I just learned that. When my septic back up and that's that, all that doo-doo coming up, right? And it stink. And that's you. Is it not? I said, Lord, that's me. I, it, it ain't flowing. <laughs> I need this stuff to flow so that more can be poured into it. Because if you don't open it, children are so open with allowing it to open and flow. Once they get there, they come out and pour it out to you. And you're like, yeah, this is for God. <laughs> I'm going to go in and cry for four hours. Nope, it's God. But today, as long as we are open, we can fill it and put it into their lives. And this isn't even half of it. The bus is so full now. We had to get Cassie to bring the rest of them. And then she's got to bring the rest of them. We didn't get to the other house. And how you tell them, well, we didn't get to you. But we're going to. We got to get up earlier. Don't say she likes this church and wants to come here. Go ahead. You can speak. You can speak to me if you don't want to talk to me. Come on, you're 12. You talk really well. Are you embarrassed? Okay, this is Do you want me to tell you? That's Cassandra. You want me to tell Cassandra I raised and she's a child. Yes. This one with her two boys and this is her younger sister. 
When I first met her, I thought she was five. I'm like, I got a cookie for you. You want a cookie? She's like, I'm 12. I'm like, huh, okay, well, both eat one then. I don't know what to tell you. I just wanted to see you smile. I'm sorry. But they're so cute because they're so brutally honest. Oh, did you get them? Jaden. How many got a cross? Hold it up. There you go. Jaden gave everybody crosses in your pocket. If you didn't get one, she's going to be here next week with the rest of them. She only had 25 of them. There's a lady that we know that bakes them. And so they pass out crosses for your pocket. That's what they have, crosses for their pockets. Because when they get to that school and their guns, there is going to be death at their school. They're trying to close their schools down, especially 5A. These children have been beaten. Jade has been jumped by 12 kids this last week. This is what they got to go through. Okay, and then now the parents are involved, and if you're not with Christ, you know how parents are. I'm going to get them. I'll get them for you, George. Come on, let's go. Where they live at? <laughs> right? you at the house, right? And then the cops are involved. You even were. Come on. But if you know Christ, the peace came. She said outside. Her sister said, don't go home. Please don't go home. Don't leave us here. Okay? And she did just that. She sat outside the house in the car all night. But when a piece of the Lord comes, it ain't going to nothing to happen to these kids. Nothing. Nothing. When they come here on Friday night, let me tell you something. Like Pastor said, when they come here on Friday night, you, you want to peek. You can be a peeping Tom right outside this window on Friday nights. Or you can come in. They danced this whole church. They went round and round and singing and praising. And then we got to share. They shared stuff. Mm, mm, mm. Mm. but it's their house, right? You kids believe this is your place. This is their house, and that's how they see it. That's how they see it. And I'm not going to stop coming. You're going to have to put me out. I'm trying to reach a little girl who's been put out of a church at 14 years old. They put her out. Why? Because she's different. They told her she couldn't come in because she is different. I'm going to leave it at that. She is different. She goes, they'll put me out. I said, they won't put you out, girl. You got to trust. They're not going to put you out. They put her out of a funeral, of, her own, of your brother's funeral, because of what she is. And I keep telling her, you know what? We pick her up after us. We keep trying. We leave here at 9. It ain't over for us. 9.30, we're in holiday picking up more kids, coming over back over to Holy Ground. They out there swinging on that swing. And somebody gave us a Christmas and playing like crazy. And then she want to go home before she can come here because she doesn't believe me that you're not going to look at her funny or that you're not going to put her out of the church. Like the pastor's not going to put her out of church. She's still afraid to come on Fridays. And I keep telling her, it's going to be all right. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. As long as you walk through them doors, the only thing that matters is Jesus Christ. The rest doesn't matter. The rest doesn't matter. Don't look to your left. Don't look to your left. Everybody there is going to hug you. You're going to have to let them. And you ain't used to that. So get your bad self out of my car. And take it back in the house and think about that. Because if at 930 at night I'm taking 15 kids all the way to holiday to pick you up, that's love. And bringing you all the way back in my house and you want to go home at 1130, I said no. No. We don't love you all night long. You ain't going nowhere. I don't got you now trapped. I'm done. I can't do the service. I got to go. We're going to dismiss our children this time. So if you'd all stand and just follow Sister Lisa, you go into your classroom. Amen. Yeah, time for church. Honey, have a seat. You'll be all right. God bless you all. You know, it's interesting how we expect the children to be disciplined when they've never received any kind of training whatsoever. It's up to us to be kind and, and patient with them and love them. And I so much appreciate Deacon Zach. You know, the last time he took a child out, the mother told him off, beat him up, and left the church. But you know, sometimes we just have to have order. 
And if we don't continue uh, trying to discipline the children as much as we can without hurting them, uh, yeah, how, how do we uh, raise them up? The way they, anyway, we won't go into all that. Well, praise God. It's a new beginning around here. Come on, church. Hallelujah. You know, I'm up all kind of crazy hours in the morning. This morning, the thought came to me. I was reminded of a gentleman who was here with us. He had been here for, um, is she okay? Okay. All right. Praise the Lord. He had been here for quite a while, and um, his wife passed away, and when she passed away, he came and he says, I want all the money we've ever given to the church. This church is getting to be too black. There was one time when it was 95% white folks in here and it was just three of us. And, uh, yeah. And, um, <laughs> well, we had, we had to get some legal things taken care of and whatnot. But what is wrong with us? Why can't we come together as a people of God and, and just love each other? Care, genuinely care for each other and not looking around to see who's different or who, who's doing what and who smells. It's time for us to get it together. Yes. Amen. Yes. If you agree with me, come on, stand to your feet and say, I'm in this. I'm in this. Hallelujah. Yes. This man's my best friend and my father on earth. My father on earth is standing right next to me. And if anybody has any problem with racism in this place right here, they can come see me. Amen. I didn't mean for all that. But <laughs> That's how I feel. Racism is wrong. Yes. Racism is a bind that Satan puts on us. We are all God's children. One day I'll tell you my testimony about racism and you'll understand where I'm coming from. But the world puts all this demonic exposure right. on us to try to control us and to try to bind us and, and separate us. Mm -hmm. Together, together, whether you're a Democrat or Republican, whether you're um, uh, uh, Chinese, black, white, Spanish, any kind of culture, there's thousands of different cultures, thousands. Matter of fact, the people in North Jersey don't like the people in South Jersey. I mean, this is just crazy. People in Spring Hill don't like people in, in another town. And it's, it's just crazy. We're all children, children of God. And when we come together, I don't know what made me walk up here, but I just have to tell you, when we come together, we accomplish things, you know, we, right. we do, we accomplish That's things. Right. So just walk in love, walk in love. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. Now, I want you all to do just a simple little exercise. Let's open up your Bible and take a look at the print that's on the page. Now, what color is that print? It's black. The page itself is white. But you lay your hand, we lay our hands on that Bible, and we're just different shades of brown. We're all God's children. It does not matter how pale or how dark your skin is. We're all children of God. Plain, simple, that's it. And I love each and every person here. And I don't care what anybody outside says. There's only one race. That's the human race and God's children. That's it. Hallelujah. Oh, we can have a riot here today. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Well, we have a guest speaker this morning. Tyrone, please see it, please. What is huh? Hallelujah, saints. Hallelujah. It's amazing how God set the stage. I sat here and I watched how we serve an amazing God, saints. An amazing God. And we have so much work to do. I wanted to thank Lisa because what I see in front of me is the future. Our future. And she's taking it upon herself. A sacrifice.
for those kids. I want to thank Barry and Sue for going out and ministers to those who's in shut-in and praying for those who are sick and ill. The ministries of this house. And that's what God is calling us to do, to be an extension of him. His arms, his eyes, a touch, and encourage a word. That's what he's calling us to do. That's who he's calling of us. Father, Pastor, I thank you because you allow the Holy Spirit not only to reign in this house, but allow us to be a reflection of our Heavenly Father and what he's calling us to do. So I thank my pastor and his wife, Hallelujah. Sister Erna, because, you know, there's so many mega churches out there. And we lose sight of who our Heavenly Father is. Because a lot of time he's a man on the pulpit. And we say, where is Jesus? Our only hope. Hallelujah. We sang that last song. He's our only hope. Amen. Jesus Christ. Our living hope. Hallelujah. He's our only hope, saints. In this season of our life. Bow your hearts with me today. Thank you, Father. Before we go any farther, we come before you, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart, be acceptable in your sight. My God, as I decrease, you increase, Heavenly Father. Let every word that comes out of my mouth be that of you. My understanding be your understanding. Download your presence, Heavenly Father, right now. And let every word that come out of my mouth touch the heart of your people according to your will. You be glorified in everything I say and do, my Heavenly Father. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father. I want you to know this is truly a sacrifice. It's still a sacrifice today. When you come on this pulpit, you got to ask God for divine, his word to work through us because it's truly a sacrifice. And right now I feel weak. So I want you to help me this morning. I want you to help me this morning. Every now and then a word jump out. The Lord spoke to me. You know, we all like to get up here. We've been so blessed to hear so many sermons across this pulpit last week what a powerful testimony of a young man after that testimony I could have gone home a man a young kid who turned his life over to our Heavenly Father and returned what wasn't his that was powerful every week we see God show up in such a way here that it makes me don't want to miss a Sunday because I always say, what is he going to do next? What, are, what is our Heavenly Father will do next? And he shows up in a mighty way. Before I go into the message, which is going to be on, victory over discouragement. And I'm going to let you know where that discouragement came from. Victory over discouragement. Sometimes a word, a Bible verse jumps out at you. And it takes you for a loop. Every Tuesday night, the men get together, we study the word, and we become vulnerable, vulnerable before our Heavenly Father. We study the word, and we hear testimonies. Those that don't know, we have men's group on Tuesday and women's group right next to it on Tuesday. I invite you all because it is so powerful. I invite you because God shows up in such a way and David, I want to read, say to you, we would have loved to have you this Tuesday. I knew you was on a business conference and doing some stuff, but God showed up in such a way because there was a struggle on something, and it made me went home and look at this verse. And I had to think about it for a while. And this is the verse that jumped out at us. We were studying and we're going through Proverbs. We're still in Proverbs 8. And Proverbs 20, verse 6 stood out at us. 
it jumped out at me at first. And then I, the Lord said, I want you to keep your mouth shut because I have someone that's going to speak on this verse. And I want you to think about this for a minute. Let's all read it together. Most men will proclaim everyone his own goodness, but a faithful man who can find. Think about it. I'm going to read it in a message verse. Because I'm from Brooklyn, I like to hear, I like to hear it in Brooklynese. <laughs> a lot of people claim to be loyal and loving. But where on earth can you find one? Where could you find one? I went, I went home and I thought about that. Everyone have an agenda. And it's, most of the time it's not God's agenda. They look at you for their hope. But you remember we just sang that song, there's only one living hope. Jesus Christ, my living hope. They have an agenda. The older I get, I realize the, the agenda becomes more prominent. They come straight up and tell you what it is. Do you got any money? No, I'm just here standing. I'm telling you the truth. I need a beer. Tell the truth. They got the signs up. They're telling you what they want. No one go to the source, the true living hope. No one goes anymore. It took me for a loop. Where could you find one? And Jesus showed me. Yes, we all get discouraged from time to time. Because in every high, there's always a low. In every high, there's always a low. We just had, what was that on? Bayshore, what was that going on? Millions of people, Gasparilla. Many people out there throwing out bees out there. It's good, having fun. But guess what's happening today? There's a low. There's a low. In every high, there's a low. Why? Because there's only one hope, and that's in Jesus Christ, our Heavenly Father. Seek ye first kingdom of God and his righteousness. All these things will be added on to you. Seek him first in everything we do. Seek him first. Seek him first. It took me a while to understand, and everything I do is seek him first. Seek him first. There's sometimes I want to tell my wife something, and God is saying, you better seek me first before you go to her. <laughs> you better seek me first, because she's going to be real with me. She's going to be real. Seek her first. No, seek him first. Seek him first and his righteousness and all these things will be added on to. We know the verses. Disappointment in people. In the perfect world, these kids would be perfectly well behaved. The fathers would be in the home. We could go on and on in a perfect world. We live in a fallen world. So God is calling us right now to reach out. Get out of our comfort zone. Lisa, what a sacrifice. All these kids, she's out of her comfort zone. Barry and Sue, out of their, well, it might be their comfort zone because they, can't, they, they willingly decide to do it. Too many people are sitting and saying, me, myself, and I, Give me more, 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 more. 
Nobody want to get out of their comfort zone. And God is calling us. God is calling us to be the encouragement, to be the, someone to say, you know what? I have a testimony, and I want to share it with you. Look what God has done in my life. Disappointment. People would disappoint you, but I know somebody that would not disappoint you. His name is? His name is? His name is? And that's what the world want to hear. His name. Not my name. No one else's name matters, but his name. Someone may disappoint you. And nine times out of ten is someone close to you cause you to get angry. Resentful. Especially if you look and you see they're wearing a cross. The Bible totem. Where the fruit. Disappointment in people. It could be something as losing a job, which sometimes is our financial security, and allow us sometimes to lose our identity and self-worth. For so long, we, nine to five, we go to work. Five days, six days a week. Sometimes people are doubling up now. Two jobs, three jobs, four jobs. And truly, that's not the answer. That's not the answer. We still got to seek him first in every decision. He'll probably cut some things loose and show us there's a shorter route. There's an easier route. There's an easier route. When we seek him first, he'll show us some things that we don't do on our own, that allow us, we got a, a daddy that owns it all. He could give it to us all. And I'm at the season of my life, I'm saying, Lord, I want a shortcut. I want a shortcut, Lord. And you know, you know the best route for me. I got a way of ministering to brothers 30 and 40 years old and I realized that God is saying from me, Brother Tyrone, from here to here is a straight route. And I tell a lot of the men, you know what we do? Instead of taking this straight route, we, di we do diversion. We go this way. Oh, it's so beautiful over here. Whatever that situation is, we go all the way out of the path situations in life and then keep going further and further out like a ship without a rudder by the time we get back over here it's way longer than we were supposed to take a lot of us own businesses do we seek god first in the things we do seek god first in situations and he will show us his way of doing business. He will show us his way of path and guide us and direct us and show us. And I realized that it is time. Sometimes sickness disappoints us because no one expects sickness in life, but it comes upon us. And what happens? We could trust that God would bring us through. And what a testimony it will be. I think that's what he allow, why he allows it. He allows it because, as you heard this morning, what a testimony. Our pastor was able to minister to this young girl. That's the only thing I think she heard. That's what the testimony is about. You know what? I've been there. I've done that. And look what God did. And look what God did. Sickness. It gets our attention. Disappointments. 
I think it can be also spiritual. Matter of fact, often spiritual warfare is either the root of the problem or it probably aggravates it. Spiritual is normally the root of the problem. Jesus said to Satan in John, we all know John 10.10. 10. Jesus said, Satan comes to, there we go. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But, ha, there we go. But, it didn't end there, saints. But there's good news. But there's what? Good news. Thank God for good news. The, the Bible also tells us, be strong in the Lord and his mighty power. Be strong in the Lord and his mighty power. It didn't end there. He come to kill, steal. Yes, you do what you got to do. You do what you got to do. And I'm going to do what I got to do. Be strong in the Lord and his mighty power. Wow, be strong. And he also said, and to put on the full armor of God so that you could take a stand against the devil's schemes. He's scheming all the time. He's scheming. Every morning I wake up, I know he's out there scheming. He wants to take, he wants to get at us. Kick us from our Joy. He want to steal your joy. Steal your happiness. Steal ability to make a difference. He wants to say, look God, look at him. Look at her. I thought he was steal, kill, and destroy. He want to bring the disappointments. Scheme. His schemes, every day he's scheming. Our struggle is not against flesh and blood. Spiritual forces of evil. That's when we recognize the schemes of the enemy. So every morning you get up and you take a shower. You brush your teeth. And you look in the mirror. Draw on the mighty power of God. And gain the victory over discouragement. Draw on his power. And put on the spiritual arm of God. Praise. Give him praise. Bless the Lord. Oh my soul. And all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Praise. Victory is in the praise. Victory is in the praise. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless your holy name before you go out in the morning. That's what Psalm 42 5 said. Psalm 42 5. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted in me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. Let me read it from the Message Bible. Brookenese. Why are you cast down in the dumps, dear soul? Why are you crying the blues? Fix my eyes on God. Soon I'll be praising him again. He puts his smile on my face. He's my God. Is he your God this morning? Do you want a smile on your face this morning? Well, bless the Lord, oh my soul. And all that's within me. Bless his holy name. 
Why are you in the dumps? Huh? Someone disappoint you? Someone said something against you? It's only the Christ in me. The hope of glory. I'm learning and I'm growing up to realize I don't want anything that doesn't have my name on it. Andy, nothing that doesn't have my name. And the only way I can figure that out, God, I only want what you have for me. Because people will dangle carrots. Here you go. Here you go. What is it, money you want? Here you go. A, f- a new car? Here you go. A new friend? Here you go. Next thing you know, you a ship without a rudder. In the ocean. Can't swim, can't lay float, can't do nothing. Now you depend on the person that's dangling the carrot. And guess what? They leave you to drown. Well, we serve a daddy that say, Peter, don't look at your circumstances. Look at a God that's bigger than the circumstances. Here you go. Here you go, God. Hallelujah. Here's a second chance, a third chance, a fourth chance. We, that's the God we serve. That's the God we serve. I'm learning to, to rely on daddy, Andy. Rely on daddy. Rely on daddy. He's not going to disappoint me. He's not going to disappoint me. And if he allow a circumstance to take place, it's to strengthen me. It's to encourage me to let me know, Tyrone, someone is coming down for you to share. We all are conduits. As he give, we got to give. As he ministers, we got to minister. As he allow us, we got to let people know, you know what? God did this for me. I'm not going to lie. When I was growing up, they tell me, get the big house, the fancy car, to impress people that I didn't like. It's only now I realize it, it doesn't matter. Andy, I prefer to go back to a bicycle. Give me a bicycle, Andy. Or a donkey. Yeah. Now I see why Jesus t- said, that donkey over there, let him stay there. Because people are not going to judge you. You know where he drives? You know where he dr- You know where he lives? That's people for you. People come in my business all the time. Where's your boss? If you can't see me as a boss, He's not here. I go in the back. I said, Lord, forgive me. Lord, forgive me. He's not here. Because that's my boss. He's my boss. They have an agenda. Where is your boss? I'm learning to tone down. Holy pants, little piece of shirt. No more jacket. It makes it too easy to recognize who's the boss. He's not here. He's risen. He's risen. Thank you, Father. He's risen. The CEO no longer resides here. He's the CEO of my life. And change has to take place. We have to consult him in everything. Everything we do, we have to consult him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Don't give in to it, saints. Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Life and more abundantly. 
And also, he says, in James 4, 7, resist the devil and he will resist him. We should get so good at resisting him when he comes with his schemes that he's going to come to you and say, man, you know what? It didn't work the last time. Let's go next door. That's how it ought to be. This Christian life is, is a battlefield, saints. With an enemy who's about to defeat us every day. But God. I say, but God. God has given us strategies. Say strategies. For winning. And we say it a lot of time here. You know what the strategy is? Somebody just said it, praise. That's, that's one of them. Praise. There's something about praise. Praise. When you face a situation you cannot handle, praise him. Praise him. Praise him. This will allow us to take the situation from us. Looking at our situation, looking at our problems, I say, to God be the glory. Praise him anyhow. Praise him. Every way, every opportunity. You may feel not worthy, but he is. You might feel that you're not worthy, but he is. You may feel that he, you're not able, but He's able. You even may feel that you're not willing, but he is. He is. Praise invite God to intervene. So use it. He, invite him to intervene. I don't know if you all like, when I, I used to we're all rustling a lot. And one guy in the middle keeps getting pummeled, pummeled, getting beat up in the, in, the, in the ring. And all he had to do was get to the, the, the ropes and tag his partner. And nine times out of, the, out of the ten, the partner comes in and he's stronger and more, he has more ability. You tag him and he comes in, next thing you know, the match is over. We got to tag praise. Hallelujah. Praise. All we got to cry out. Lord, I need you. I need you. Oh, I need you. Every hour, I need you. Oh, Jesus, I need you. Don't waste time in your own power. I need you, oh, Lord. I need you. A situation going wrong. I need, boy, I cry out, I need you so much. In business, we better cry out, I need you. Oh, Lord, I need you. God say, it's him again. That's Tyrone's cry. It's him again. Tyrone, the angels are right there. Just keep crying. Just keep praising me. That's what he wants. He wants to know that we could cry out to him. Go to the throne, not the phone. Go to the throne, saints. When I was younger, I would call a friend. Man, you know, look what's going on. And they so love when you call them because now they feel, they feel like the king. They got the answer. They always have the answer. They think they always have the answer. I've come to realize only God, only God has the answer. Only God has. When Israel's army went into battle, the tribe of Judah led the way. The name Judah means praise the Lord. They were up front. The name Judah means praise the Lord. This strategy 
topple the walls of Jericho for Joshua and cause Jehoshaphat enemies to destroy one another before the battle even begins. Praise. It caused the enemies to flee and allow you to win the battle before it even begins. Before it even begins. Praise, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I come to you. Hallelujah. Me and my wife are going through something that we didn't expect. It, it overwhelmed us. And it really made me grow up as a father, as a husband. When I said I do to my wife, my high school sweetheart, I didn't expect that life happens the way it does. But things happen in our lives to allow us to grow through some things where God shows up in our lives and we say, look, God did that. Hallelujah. To allow us to be bold. Hallelujah. To let the world know he is able. Hallelujah. He's in control. Hallelujah. In all things. Amen. Someone walk out of your life. Go. Amen. I got a daddy that always stay by me. Hallelujah. Always stay by me. I can get on my knees and say, Lord, I need you. Amen. Now I need you. Amen. A situation doesn't agree. Lord, I only want you to come in agreement with me. Your agreement is the only agreement that matters in life. Your agreement. Your word, you're able, you are available. Always available. He don't have hours, eight to nine, close on Saturday, we open back on Monday, we go to lunch from one to two. No, he doesn't have that kind of schedule. He don't have that kind of schedule. We could call upon him anytime. Anytime. Lord, I need you. Praise him. Hallelujah. Praise him in the morning, in the afternoon. That's at night. That's where the victory is, saints. That's where the victory is. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. The Bible said, at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto, unto God. And suddenly, he didn't say two weeks from now. He didn't say tomorrow. He didn't say wait. And suddenly, the Bible said, and suddenly, oh, I love this. All the doors were open. Matter of fact, let's read it because there's something to be said about God's word. And I, I want you to see the magnitude of what happened here. I call it jailhouse conversion. That's what I call it. Acts 16, 25 to 34. Let us all read together. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them. Wait a minute. They were singing praises. And who heard them? So they were listening. A lot of time when you sing praises, not for you. It's for people who's there listening. But if you don't sing no praises, they're like, I thought he was. But he wears a cross. He carries a Bible. He rebukes me. They were listening. Hallelujah. The prisoners heard them. 
and suddenly there was a great earthquake. Hold on. Look at the power of our God. When he's willing to do something for you, he would allow earthquakes to free you from whatever it is, whatever it is. He's almighty power. He'll break chains. Earthquake. So that the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately all the doors were open and everyone's bands were loose. You want to be loose this morning? Praise him. Praise him. You want to be what situation you face that an earthquake can't demolish? That's the power of our God. A loved one that think they got it all right. Praise God. Say, Lord, I know you got him in your hands. And I know one day he's going to get before you and say, to God be the glory. Just praise him. Someone don't treat you right. Praise God. Lord, I know you have a better plan. I know you have a better plan. And I'm going to praise you now in advance for what's about to take place. I'm praising you now in advance for what is about to take place. Hallelujah. But Paul cried out with a loud voice saying, okay, I'm sorry. sorry. I'm getting ahead of myself, saints. I'm so excited. Okay. 27. And the keeper of the prison awakening out of his sleep. And seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself. Wait, stop right there himself. He grabbed his sword and wanted to kill himself. Wanted to kill himself. But he's a prison guard. He's supposed to watch over. But he did some turpulation and realized to them it's better to kill myself than allow this manifestation to take place. Look at the power. Look at the power that God has. Whatever you're thinking about, that you think, God, his ways are not always. It's much higher. And when he does something, he does it well done. Well done. And we can sit back and see, man, God, you are good. You are good. So let him do what he does best. Just step out of the way. Let, let, him, let him perform the earthquake move. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Pull out the sword and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had been fled. But Paul cried out with a loud voice, look at mercy. No, don't kill yourself. Do thyself no harm. For we are all here. We know what you're going through. We know what you're about to do. But look at grace and mercy. We are here. We, pr- we, knew, we knew what praise would do. We know what to expect. So just wait and see what's going to happen. Don't harm yourself. 29. Then he called for a light and sprang in and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas and brought them out and said, Sir, because there's two of them, what must I do to be saved? Isn't that our ultimate call? But what God wants us to do, to be a reflection of him, for people to come up to you and say, man, there's something about you, and I've watched your life, which is my testimony. What must I do to be saved? And point to him. And point to him. And point to him. 31. 
And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and thy house. And thy house. They said, wait a minute, there's a bonus. There's a bonus. In thy house. Your whole house. Not just you. I know you're thinking just for me, Andy. But no, your house. Beyond that. Your whole family and families to come will be saved. That's why I wanted this to be read. There's some people in your house that's unruly, that's going their own way, that feel they got it all going on. Me, myself, and I, I got it going on. But wait. God's timing is perfect. Not your timing. Wait. I used to get mad. Why don't you get it? Why don't you understand? He's the only way. My voice was too familiar. They don't want to hear me. They don't want to hear anybody in my house. And God is saying, that's not your job. I didn't give you that assignment. Just because you know the word and you feel holy. That's not your assignment. I got somebody for that. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. Just, just keep on praising him and be of good courage. He will strengthen your heart. And look, you got a bonus. And the whole house will be saved. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord. You see, it's in his word. It's in his word. And to all that were in his house, and to all that was in his house, 33 and 34. And he took them and said, the same hour of the night, and washed their stripes, and was baptized. Baptist. He and all his straightaway, 34, and when he had brought them into his house, he set me before them and rejoiced. Believing in God with all his house. That's right. That's right. Give God a praise. Yes. Yes. The battle is not yours, saints. Go to battle in high praises of the Lord in your mouth. And he will go before you. High praises. And he will go before you. In closing... Self-centeredness makes people easy prey for Satan. Self-centeredness. It's my way or the highway. Me, myself, and I. I got it going on. I, 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 I. The I syndrome. I was told even recently, we have to listen. Sometimes when you hear people say, I, 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 I. Beware. Beware. I, I. There's no we in I. Self-centeredness makes people easy prey to Satan. Easy. A lack of love for God and others cause them to give up when discouragement strikes. So we must be filled with God's love. Then we must reach out to help the needy. We saw it this morning. God had already set the stage. We must be willing to reach out to help the needy. And also witness to the lost. You might consider yourself not lost. I know I'm lost unless God show up and show me and guide me and direct me every day. So consider those that don't know him. He gave us a mandate to go out and reach the world. All the world. That's why every time I see Lisa and what she's doing, 
It tugs my heart. What could I do, Lord? I pray. And every day he shows us. I want to I wanna brag on a man. Thank you, man, for donating that eight-passenger bus. Amen. Then you all see the need and realize they needed more. Right. Took the eight-passenger bus and said, no, she need more. A 12-passenger bus. Thank you, man. And church of NBLC. Now we heard she's outgrown the 12-passenger bus. So what's, that, what's beyond that, David? 36 passenger? A 24 bus, 24 seat bus. 224, there we go. I forgot that you, you speak higher than sometimes we, you, you speak more beyond. You operate on God's frequency. Because we got a God that have everything. Speak his word. Speak his word. And let him know, God, this is my desire. Not only to serve you and to honor you, but I want to be a reflection of you. In everything that you do. We must be filled with God's love. Look at how, look how, how God dealt with Elijah. He told him two things. Two. Not three, not four. He just said two. You know, we got a God that's very simple for us to understand. He said two things. When Elijah reached his lowest point, when Elijah reached his lowest point, we all been there. We reach our lowest point. God said, God told him to go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord. This helped Elijah to stop thinking about himself and his problems and start thinking about God. We got to deflect what we think about daily, day in and day out. When we think of God constantly, he shows up. When we give him praise, he shows up. And then before you realize it, you say, I thought I had a problem. It doesn't exist anymore. Because he's going to take care of it. He's going to deal with it. He took, Elijah stopped thinking about himself and his problems and started thinking about God. Saints, when God has your ear, he will speak into it. When he have your ear, he will speak into it. Beyond that, when he have your heart, when he has your heart, my God, look what he would do. I get excited. Excuse me. He would minister to it. Do you want God to minister to you this morning? Let him have your heart this morning. Let him minister to you. Give him your ear. Let him speak into it. These are your ears. This is your heart. Don't let any and everybody speak into your heart. Or speak into you. Don't just let anybody come and speak. I got a word for you. Nah. Is it coming from the Lord? Where that word is coming from? Only God shall speak into your ear and minister to you. Or only him. That's why reading God's word is so important. So important. When life is dragging you down. When life is dragging you down. Climb into God's word. Climb into his word. And guess what? Claim his promises. Claim his promises. Climb into his word and claim his promises. Thank you, Father. Number two, in closing, God told Elijah to anoint Elisha to succeed for Elisha. First King 1911. I didn't make it up. T 
take the focus off yourself and look for someone to minister to. You're not the only one in the world that has problems. And that's so true. There are people worse off than us. We heard it this morning with the kids. The Friday session. So if you hear some of these stories, it would put you to tears. Break your heart. There's always, I always tell the men, when we complain that our shoes are too tight, there's always somebody with no shoes. No, no feet. There's always somebody worse than us. And besides that, they need someone like you to come alongside them and minister to them and encourage them and to say, look what the Lord has done. Let me tell you something about my, my, my daddy. Let me tell you what he has done for me. Let me tell you where he has brought me from. And guess what? He's not done yet. He's not done yet. I can't wait. Look what he has done. Take your eyes off of yourself. There's ministry for each and every one of us. Say, Lord, what you want me to do? Be a father to a, the fatherless. Be a mother to the motherless. Be an encourager. I got to the point where I said, when I came in here, I said, Lord, let me just clean the bathrooms. I could clean it, spick and span. And God is going to say, man, you're doing a good job there. Work on the carpets. Work on the seats. Dust the fans. He always got something for us to do. And when you give, when you, you becoming a conduit. God, can't, you cannot give him. We get to the point where we struggle for the tab. I'm not going to let you beat me to that tab. Grab that. You know why? Because God is looking. You're not going to take my blessing. I know I'm looking for a blessing this week, Lord. Grab that. You see, that a lot of us don't trust God. We don't believe him. We believe in our abilities. It was to the point where I would write a check and breathe in. <sighs> but I know tomorrow God is going to show up and say, I'm going to make that good. You write it in faith. And I'm going to show you who I am in faith. In business, you got to operate in faith. Make payroll. And many times, you're paying people and you don't get paid. You're paying everybody and you don't get paid. You say, Lord, what about me? And God is saying, what about you? You have faith, right? And we operate on faith. But you know what he was teaching me? He said, business is not about that loss you just took. It's a comprehension of everything. You lose here, you lose here, you win here, you win here, you win here. Get more wins than you lose. And it makes you stronger. It builds your faith, builds your courage. And he shows up in a mighty way. So if you want to see the spirit of depression lift, the spirit of discouragement lift, Stop looking in the mirror. Stop looking in the mirror and look outside. Look outside. Look around. Look in the church. There's someone for you to bless. There's someone for you to hug. There's someone for you to encourage. There's a ministry waiting for you. And watch them scatter. Watch the enemy flee. Watch the enemy flee. That's why I constantly say, Barry and Sue, I thank you. Lisa, I thank you. Anne Marie, thank you. Susan, thank you, thank you, thank you. Because we can't do everything. A body is the sum of its parts. 
And sometimes we are missing some of the parts of the body. I'm just missing what God is saying to me right now. We want a blessing. And God already provided a blessing. He's already provided. But we got to operate according to thus say the Lord. And watch it flows. There will be no backup. You heard, heard this? There will be no backup. It's going to flow. There's no kink in the hose. You know when you, you try to water a plant and the water turns off, you look back, there's a kink in the hose. Oh, man, release that kink. We got some kinks in our lives. To allow the water to flow. His grace and the mercy to flow. What he wants for us to flow. All businesses to flow, succeed. I get to the point I realize... I got to think bigger because my God is bigger. I got to act bigger because he's bigger. I got to think bigger. I got to believe bigger because he's bigger. Sometimes it might seem that the world get it. The world gets it. But we supposed to operate bigger than that. Bigger than that. Speak his word. Climb into his word and claim his promises. Lord, you promised me that. There's a lot of testimonies in here. And as we gain those testimonies and begin to pile up, give God the glory and thank him for who he is. To God be the glory. Bow your hearts with me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Heavenly Father, we just want to say thank you for who you are. Thank you, Lord Jesus for keeping us and loving us the way you do. Thank you for shielding us. Thank you for always pouring out your blessings upon us. At times we don't even recognize it, Lord. Forgive us. Thank you for staying below us, Father, for giving us, giving us support. As we heard, you allow earthquakes to free. You would go towards the one and leave the 99. That's who you are. You're a merciful God. You're an amazing God. You are our only hope, Heavenly Father. We bless your holy name, not just with our voice, but with our hearts. Our actions, Heavenly Father. Let our actions speak that the world will say, there's something different about you. And it's all because of your download presence in our spirit. Your spirit is operating in each and every one of us. Now speak to us, Father, as we go out these doors to take back what belongs to you in the mighty name of Yeshua. Go before us, Heavenly Father. Guide us and direct us. Stay within us, Father, Holy Spirit, to teach us and to show us and allow us to speak your words, see through your eyes, hear through your ears, and love the way you love. Heavenly Father, we give you the glory. And Heavenly Father, I hope that your servant speak your word this morning. And I thank you, Lord, for giving me the opportunity. As I, as I am weak, you are strong. Thank you for giving me the courage, Heavenly Father, to recognize it's not me but you. It's all about you. You are building my faith, Lord Jesus. As we give you the glory, we give you all the honor and all the praise. In the mighty name of Jesus, all God's people say, Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. What a message. I pray you got something out of this. This was powerful. Amen. I want you to encourage our brother. Hallelujah. I'm so glad you mentioned about cleaning bathrooms. You know, I have um, a need. We do have a need at the house for folks to come and help clean God's house. We kind of think that this house belongs to other people to clean and, and to take care of. I want to challenge you this morning. If you would just take some time out and, and, and help get the place cleaned up a little bit every week, I would appreciate it. We can't leave it for just one or two people to do. Amen. 
This is not our house is God's house. So let's keep it clean and let's do it right. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's all stand this morning. Give God some praise for the word of God. This morning was powerful. It has reached your hearts. Hallelujah. You have reason to rejoice. What an awesome God we serve. If you place your hand on your heart. I know the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his perfect peace. In the name of our Heavenly Father, who loves us with an everlasting love. In the name of Yeshua, Jesus, his majesty, the King of glory. In the name of Holy Spirit, who comes now to reveal truth, to keep you on that straight and narrow path, and to watch over you. And we thank God for his word. In Jesus' name, I bless you with all heavenly blessings. Amen? Amen. As your soul prospers, you so should you. Now, don't forget, 6 o'clock this evening, we're meeting here again. Siggy is going to be speaking. It's going to be a powerful time. We're going to have a great time in the Lord. Amen. And then listen, don't do, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Give me a break. Next Sunday, uh, Nick the Greek was scheduled to be here, but he had put it up for the, he had to change the time for the following Sunday. Amen. Amen. So the following Sunday, he'll be here. Next Sunday, I'll be preaching. So if you don't come, I'll know what's wrong with, uh, never mind. So. Have a great week. We'll see you tonight at 6 o'clock. God bless.